Hi, this is Peter Bergdahl at peterbergdahl.com and in the next three minutes or so I will show you a strategy that's absolutely critical to succeed in the stock photography business. First I would like to make a critical distinction between a good photo and a good marketable photo. And what you want is a good marketable photo, but let me explain what I mean. A good marketable photo is not necessarily the most beautiful or the most artistic photo and it's not necessarily taken with the most expensive camera either because many photos are extremely beautiful but also extremely hard to sell and many hot selling photos are taken with cheap cameras like point and shoot cameras that said an expensive camera or a beautiful photo is not something bad I'm just saying it's not necessarily required so what is a marketable photo then well, a good marketable photo usually falls within two categories. And category one is photos about people doing something. For example, a father helping his son to build a model train. That kind of photos are very useful in the magazines, for example, about model trains. And the second category is photos about that are expressing a concept or a mood. For example, happiness, loneliness, love, fear, anger, and so on. And I encourage you to study the best selling photos. And you can do that because many stock agencies have a list of best selling photos. And if you study these you can really drill down what kind of photos that are selling the best. Okay, so let's then talk a minute about the perfect market if that exists. The perfect market consists of four different criteria. And the first one is high demand. And the way you can measure demand is, for example, look in magazines or see the number of download in microstock sites. The second criteria for a perfect market is that it should have a limited supply. And again, you can go back to microstock site and see the number of images in that certain market or subject. The third criteria is that it should be within your interest or hobby because it obviously makes it more fun if your market is also your interest or your hobby. And the fourth criteria is that it should be easily accessible because, for example, a man walking on the moon or a man summiting Mount Everest might have a very high demand, but they are not easily accessible. In fact, they are very, very difficult to take. I have made a demo video with practical examples uh, to how to determine demand and supply, and I placed it on my blog. So you can go there after this video to make it and then it should be more clear how to determine demand and supply. So now we come to the big idea or the most important part of this presentation. Let me ask you what is the best strategy? Is it first to take photos and then try to find the market or is it to first find the market and then take photos for that particular market? Well. The answer should be very obvious. You first find the market and then take photos for that market. I repeat this because this is so so important. You first find the market and then afterwards you take photos for that market. But sadly enough most stock photographers do exactly the opposite. They start taking photos and then they try to find the market. And that's surely a recipe for failure. Okay, so now we come to the end of this video and I really hope you enjoyed it. But before you leave I would like to mention just a few things. It's perfectly okay to embed this video on your website. Just grab the embed code and put it on your website. There is no need to ask for permission or anything. Secondly, please make comments about this video. Just express your opinion about it. And also you can rate the video. Please do so. Just express your opinion about this video. And finally I want you to go to my blog at peterbergdahl.com and watch the demo video on how to determine supply and demand. It will make the whole thing much easier to understand. Okay, thank you so much.